Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Mr. Black. <laughs> well, Mr. McCain and Mark. <laughs> good morning. Oh, glad to see you so happy, Jacob. And for good reason, Lucas. For good reason. Well, then, maybe I picked the right day to talk business with you, huh? Business? Any day is the right day for that. What do you want? Well, that strip of land you've got, Jacob, uh, along the creek bed that runs into mine, I'm getting tired of going around it. I'd, uh, I'd like to straighten out my boundary line. Well, land's for sale, I told you that. I'll pay you a fair price, I've told you that, but not a nickel more. <laughs> then walk around it. Now, look, Jacob, I've been a good neighbor to you. No, I don't deny that. And that strip of land is no use in the world to you. That's right. Well, then why do I have to pay you an unreasonable profit? For no reason, except that I own it and you want it. I don't want it, Jacob. I just don't want to walk around it anymore. There's a price on that land. Either take it or leave it. Good day, Lucas. Good day, Mark. I know you and Mr. Black are good friends, Paul. But you sure do argue a lot. <laughs> well, we are good friends, son. But sometimes he gets under my skin. Come on. Look out! Run away! Jacob? Feels easier, Doc. Neighbor of yours, is he? Lives alone, does he? Mm -hmm. Bring his cattle over and let him run with yours and shut up the house. He's hurt bad. Doc, is he, is he gonna live? Now, that's a fool question, Lucas. I don't know. I ain't the almighty. He's hurt inside somewhere, and I don't know how to put a poultice on that. Doc. Yes? Doc, am I, am I as bad off as I feel? Well, you can't tell much according to the pain, but you're a tough old bird. Doc, have you got some medicine that will make me feel good? I won't lie to you, Jacob. Lucas. I want to ask you, you a favor. Now, don't worry, Jacob. I'll look after your place. Get somebody else to look after my place. I want you to go to Willow Springs. Willow Springs? What for? Two months ago, I went to... St. Louis, remember? I got married. Surprised. Yes, Jacob. First time I've been happy in 15... Years. She's gotten as, gotten as far as Willis. Well, on my way to North Fork. Waiting for connecting stage. Well, it's a full week before the stage comes in from Willis Springs. That's right, Jacob. I want to see her before. Doc, seven days? I wouldn't count on it, Jacob. Doc. Riding hard, I could bring her here in three, maybe four. I couldn't even guarantee that. Oh, Lord. I want to see her one more time. Oh, Lord. Jacob, I'll go to Willow Springs. Thank you. It'll take three, maybe four days. Three days. I'll wait. Lucas, I'll make it worth your while. I'll do this much for a neighbor, Jacob, not for pay. Thanks anyway. How is it? 
is he? No, I can't tell yet, son, but he's a tough old man. Now, we've got some work to do. Yes, sir? You round up Mr. Black's stock and run him with ours. Get one of the boys to help you. You think he can do that? Sure. Good. Now, I've got to go to Willis Springs to fetch Mrs. Black. I'll Mrs. Be gone. Black? Well, never mind that now. I'll be gone three days, maybe more. You stay with Millie and ride out every day and water the stock. Oh, Paul, I don't have to stay with Millie. Well, I'm old enough to take care of myself. You're old enough and smart enough to know I don't want to worry about you. I won't if you stay with Millie. Well, if you want me to. Well, that's better. Now, let's get home. I need supplies and another horse. You remember to look after Mr. Black's stock, son. Be sure to quit early enough to get to Millie's by sundown, huh? I will. Don't worry about a thing. I'm going to miss you, Paul. I'm going to miss you, too, son. Sir? No, thank you. I'm looking for a woman named Mrs. Jacob Black. You know her? Well, no. That woman's got a bigger reputation than I thought. Reputation? You're fine in the bar back there. Don't offer me whiskey. Don't offer me wine. I was weaned on champagne in the cradle of mine. Champagne, champagne, it's good for your thirst. If you drink it so fast, then the bubbles won't burst. I'm cold on the outside, but inside I'm... Are you I'm sure that's Mrs. That's her, all right. Beauty, ain't she? For champagne, champagne, it's good for your thirst. If you drink it oh, so fast, then the bubbles won't burst. My answer is no, sir, but nevertheless, when you're drunk on champagne, then my no sounds like yes. I'm cold on the outside, but inside I'm warm. Champagne is sweet love in drink of the form. Champagne, champagne. Excuse me, ma'am. Are you Mrs. Jacob Black? I'm Elizabeth. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I can't think of myself that way. Yes, I'm Elizabeth Black, but I'm really Beth Garrett. Who are you? I'm Lucas McCain from North Fork, your husband's neighbor. Well, isn't that nice? I'm meeting the neighbors already. Sit down, Luke, and raise a glass with us. No, thanks, ma'am. Could I have a word with you in private, Mrs. Black? These gentlemen are friends of mine. Well, Jacob is a friend of mine. I'm here because he asked me to come. Then I'm sure you've had a long, gusty ride and you've earned a cool drink. Uh, Jack, pour a glass for Mr. McCain. I don't have the time, Mrs. Black, and neither do you. Now, what I've got to say to you is best said in private, and it is important. Well, that's too bad, Mr. McCain, because I'm entertaining my friends. Mrs. Black, your husband was hurt yesterday, real bad. The doctor didn't think he'd live till the stage could bring you to North Fork. Now, Jacob asked me to come for you. We can be there by tomorrow night. Oh, heavens. Oh, merciful heavens. How dreadful, the poor man. Oh, the poor, poor man. What of me? What will I? Strange. I've played it 20 times, this scene. Wife at a gay party when the news of death comes. But I, I, I never knew how it would feel. It just feels lost. I'm an actor. 
actress, Mr. McCain. Beth Garrett, they know me in the Middle West. Well, we'll have to hurry, ma'am. I've got a horse for you. Strikes me as a long ride for a poor errand. You said yourself that Black had been just hanging on. He'd likely be dead by the time he get there. Beth, you ever ride a horse for two, three days cross country? I, I have to go to him, don't I? You hardly knew him, according to what you told us. Maybe a week. This is none of your business. Look, mister, I'm as sentimental as the next fellow, but let's be practical. Practical? Sure. Look at the odds. I'll bet money she gets there just in time for the burying. What could I say to him? I don't know him, really. Are you coming with me, Mrs. Black? Or will you be practical? Thank you for your trouble, Mr. McCain. I'm sorry you had it for nothing. <laughs> Tie you to the horse. Just what do you expect to accomplish, big man? Ow! Hey, just a minute. Well, you say you're an actress, but well, you're going to play act the loving wife because Jacob believes it. You're going to make one old man's death a little easier. Well, what about my things? I can't go like this. Yes, you can. better than I do. What's he like? Your wife must find you a pleasant one with that temper of yours. When my wife was alive, she never saw my temper. On a two-day ride, don't you think the time would pass more pleasantly with a little conversation? <gasps> don't run down that trail, it's tricky. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still too scared. Hey, but let me help you up. You can be nice, can't you? You mean you fell off that horse on... <laughs> hey, tall man. You're not gonna walk away from me now, are you? Night. It'll be a while till everything settles down to sleep. It'll get quiet. Is this friendly country? To live in, I mean. Folks are friendly enough. People are the same everywhere, not to be trusted. I mean the land, the country. You have to fight the land. And love it, too. It's been good to you? I think it's a lonely country. Things are wide apart, and people. Oh, it can be lonely. Here or anywhere. That's the worst, I think. Loneliness. Does it ever reach you? Do you live alone? I have a boy, Mark. We live alone. 
In town? A few miles out, on a little ranch. Mark McCain. Sounds nice. How old is he? Twelve. He's a good boy. Who keeps house for you? We do, as well as we can. I can hardly remember a time when I wasn't alone. No one to share with, no one to depend on. No relatives? No. I guess that's really why I like being an actress. In a play, you can pretend to belong to somebody. At least for a little while. Poor substitute, strikes me. Oh, it has its good points. You're not stuck with people you don't like. But it's not a good way to live. You're always moving around. That's bad. No roots anywhere. No roots anywhere. That's really why I agreed to marry him. Oh, it wasn't because he had money. It was more than anything a place to belong. He was kind to me and gentle, and, well, that's enough to start with. Maybe. Oh, I'd have made him a good wife. Those men in Willow Springs, they didn't mean anything to me. They were just, just company, because I was lonely on the road. Can't you understand that? Oh, I understand loneliness. I know how it tastes and how it smells. People do strange things because of it. I've seen them. Stranger things that make it an unlikely marriage. I've done some funny things myself. At times it seemed everything was empty. Empty. That's it. No one to care, no one to belong to. Do you belong to anyone? Do you? Come here, Lucas. Come here. Jacob's wife. Loneliness doesn't excuse everything. Holier than thou. That you're good at. That's easy for you. You're never weak, are you? Tomorrow morning we'll be in North Fork. You can put on your act for the man you married and make him believe it. Oh, he'll believe it. He'll believe it. Hello, son. Everything go all right? Just fine. Kind of got lonesome for you, though. How's Jacob? Well, just the same. Still waiting, the doc says. They moved him to the billiard room in the hotel where he could stretch out flat without twisting. Mm -hmm. This Mrs. Black? It's my boy, Mark. Mrs. Black, son. I thought it must be. He looks so like you. How are you, Mark? Just fine. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. This isn't the time for that. There'll never be a better time. Just how do you think he expects me to look? Dusty and messy or pretty? There. It's the best I can do. You stay here, son. Jacob. Beth. You dear Beth. Oh, Jacob, you poor man. We'll get you well. I'll take care of you. I'll be loving. You'll see. I just want to see you again. Just once more. Please don't, Jacob. Don't say that. I don't want to leave you. Before God, I don't. I want to have a home together. 
Oh, we will. We will. At least you'll have some money in the house. Lucas will help. Won't you, Lucas? Sure, Jake. Thank you for everything. You've been a good neighbor. Yes, huh? No one ever worried about me before. I'm very sorry to put you through this. Sorry it had to be this way. It's what you wanted, isn't it? He died happy, didn't he? I guess so. I met my promise to him. I'll help you any way I can. Are you satisfied? Was the performance all right? Oh, don't you think I played the bereaved wife properly? Yeah. I guess you are a pretty good actress. That poor woman. What's she gonna do now, Paul? She'll be sad for a while, son. Then she'll find a way to go on like everybody does. Come on. Lucas. What's this? Jacob had me write it up, and he signed it. Those two acres along the creek bed that you always wanted. He had me turn them over to you. He said he couldn't rest easy if he left this world beholden to anybody. <laughs> so, there was something in it for you after all. A price to be paid. And you with your holier-than-thou attitude. I should have known you were too good to be true, Mr. Almighty Lucas McCain. No matter what you think of me, this has nothing to do with the fact that I promised Jacob I'd help you. I don't need your help, and there's nothing in it for you. Well, here's your deed. I don't do favors for pay. Be as honest as you are stubborn. Are you sure you didn't expect anything in return? Wouldn't it be strange if Jacob didn't find a way to pay you back? The thought did cross your mind, didn't it? You're human, after all. It crossed my mind. I have my human moments, too. That was a good supper. Thanks for staying in town, Paul. You're welcome, son. Millie took me out for supper every night you were gone. Well, that was nice of her. Imagine Mr. Black waiting those three days. Guess he really loved her. Mm hmm I guess he did. Despite you being so much older, could you explain love to me? Oh, you don't want me to try and answer that now, do you, son? Yes, I do. Well, Mark, it's a lot of things. It means different things to different people depending on what they want. For some, it means sharing. For some, taking. For some, just doing for others. Yeah, but, but, but how does it feel? Well, if you love someone who loves you, and you both mean the same thing by it, it feels good, happy and safe, and sharing. What did she mean when she said that, that you were too good to be true? Well, I guess you... I guess she meant I have my faults, Mark. Why? Come on, let's go home.